Hello everyone. In this session, I'll be discussing on a topic gear trains. Let us understand what do we mean by gear trains. Actually, sometimes two or more gears are made to mesh with each other to transmit power from one shaft to another. Our main requirement is to transfer the power from one shaft to another. That can be done with the help of gear train. Such a combination is generally called gear trains or train of toothed wheels. The nature of train is used depends upon the velocity ratio required and the relative position of the axis of the shaft. So these are the things regarding gear trains. Before studying about gear trains, you need to understand two definitions. First definition is speed ratio and second one is train value. I would like to explain the speed ratio first. The speed ratio or you can call velocity ratio as well. The speed ratio or velocity ratio of the gear train is the ratio of the speed of the driver to the speed of driven or follower. Consider a gear train system. This is known as driver. This gear is known as driver. That means gear number one is known as driver and gear number two is known as uh, follower or driven. Okay. Uh, now you have to take the ratio of the speed. You have to take the ratio of the speed of the driver and the driven or follower. Uh, the speed of driver to the speed of the driven gear is known as speed ratio or we can say that the ratio of speeds of any pairs of the gear in mesh is the inverse of the number of teeth the speed that means the speed of the gears that is inversely proportional to number of teeth so that i can write n1 by n2 is equal to t2 by t1 where n1 and n2 the speed of the driver and speed of driven n1 stand for speed of driver and n2 stand for speed of driven or speed of follower then t2 t2 is the number of teeth of driven or follower gear where t1 is the number of teeth which is available for the driver gear Okay, if you take the ratio, you will be getting the speed ratio n1 by n2 that is the sp speed ratio between a driver and the driven uh, t2 by t1 uh, the teeth number of teeth ratio between uh, driven to the driver. So this ratio is known as speed ratio from this I can make one conclusion that speed is inversely proportional to number of teeth speed is inversely proportional to number of teeth which we can achieve from this equation. So this is regarding the speed ratio. Uh, let us move on the train value what do you mean by train value train value is nothing but uh, it can define as it may be noted that the ratio of the speed of driven or follower to the speed of driver is known as train value that means if you take the speed in this order n2 by n1 n2 is nothing but uh, the speed of driven or the speed of follower to the n1 means speed of a driver if you take the speed in this manner n2 by n1 speed ratio of uh, driven to driver that is known as train value so this can be written as n2 by n1 is equal to t1 by t2 this is also giving the same message such a way that uh, the speed is inversely proportional to number of teeth these are the two important terminologies which are related to uh, gear trains okay let us move on the next topic what are the types of gear trains uh, the dip uh, depending on the arrangement of wheels and the position of the shaft you can classify the gear trains as follows the first one is simple gear train the second thing is compound gear train and third one is reverted gear train and finally epicyclic gear train these are the classification of gear trains based on the arrangement of wheels and shaft let us discuss individually the first and foremost thing i would like to talk about simple gear train first let us look at the diagram uh, this section is representing the shaft and 1 and 2 that is actually driven 1 stand for driver gear and 2 stand for driven gear. So this is the axis corresponding to driver gear and this will be the axis corresponding to driven gear. Now let us see what is simple gear train. Uh, simple gear train is a type of gear train which is used to transmit motion and power from one shaft to another. Okay, that is a peculiarity of simple gear train. The one more speciality is such a way that only one gear will be locating on each shaft. Only one gear is available on each shaft. That is a speciality of simple gear train. Oh, there is only one shaft. One gear will be available in one shaft. 
uh, gears are in the form of series different gears if you want to connect n number of gears only one shaft will be available all the gears are connected in cascaded manner or serially fashion uh, axis of the gears remain fixed there is no change for the axis of the gears that will be remain same that remain same uh, each gear is mounted on different shaft so that's a pe peculiarity so this is actually regarding simple gear train i will be showing one elaborated diagram of simple gear train in the next slide so let us see these are the different examples of simple gear train let us look at the first portion here uh, these are the two sections of simple gear train one is driver gear and second one is fall over gear uh, both are connected in cascaded manner only one shaft is available similarly let us look at another type of simple gear train uh, there is one driver unit similarly we are having uh, driven or follower units 2 and 3 are known as driven or follower units only one shaft is available so all the things are in one shaft similarly let us look at the thir third diagram uh, we are having driver uh, 2 3 4 these are the follower gears all right uh, this is the main gear and these are the followers gear then power can be transmitted from driver to follower one shaft to another shaft shaft will be there so that power can be transmitted from one point of the shaft to another point of the shaft that is a speciality of simple gear train i hope you understood what is a simple gear train let us look at the applications of simple gear train the first application is gearbox in automobiles that is one of the simple application uh, let us move on other application like lathe machines and heavy duty press machines these are the various application of simple gear trains it is very easy to understand regarding the concept of simple gear trains coming back to second category compound gear trains what do you mean by compound gear trains it is concept will be similar as that of simple gear train but only the difference let us read out all the characteristics are same as that of the simple gear train except that more than two gears can be mounted on a single shaft more than uh, two gears can be mounted on a single shaft unlike uh, simple gear train that's a speciality of compound gear train let us analyze the diagram uh, we have a dr driver gear and we are having fallover or driven gear in between you can see uh, the compound gears these are the compound gear especially 5 is known as compound gear and 3 is also another compound gear uh, in between driver gear and the driven gear you are placing the compound gear now these are the different shaft 1 2 and 3 4 and 5 6 these are the three shaft now let us look at the shaft 1 and 2 in the shaft 1 and 2 uh, the gear number 1 and 3 are placing similarly uh, let, let us look at shaft number 3 and 4 if you look at shaft number 3 and 4 we will come to know that gear number 3 as well as 5 has been placed over the shaft 3 4 let us look back to shaft number 5 6 in that shaft number 5 6 let us see uh, gear number 5 and 6 has been placed over here so this type of arrangement is known as the compound gear train hope you are understanding this session uh, these gears are useful in bringing over the space between driver and the driven gears so this type of arrangement is generally known as compound uh, gear train let us list out the applications of compound gear train uh, it will be used in uh, ships then your watches uh, then you can use in a steam power station any power plant that uses more than a single steam turbine as a prime mover then you can use this type of gear mechanism so this is known as uh, compound gear trains let us discuss the third type of classification that is known as a reverted gear train uh, let us understand what is a reverted gear train uh, when the axis of the first gear uh, that is driver gear and the last gear that is follower ge gear are coaxial then the gear train is known as reverted gear train coaxial is nothing but uh, the object which are locating in the same axis that is known as coaxial uh, let us uh, discuss from the diagram regarding reverted gear train so this is the typical example of reverted gear train uh, there are different combinations of gear like 1 4 then 3 2 here 1 and 4 uh, is one system in that 1 and 4 we can see that for the first gear is known as driver gear and the fourth one is known as driven or follower gear similarly 3 and 2 you can see that uh, third gear is driver and uh, second one is known as follower gear, follower gear now you have to concentrate gear 1 and 4 number one and four you are supposed to concentrate now let us see the axis both are lying in the same axis you can see both are one and four both are lying in the same axis both are working in the same axis that is why it is known as coaxial 
coaxial type gear train or you can call reverted gear train that means uh, 1 and 4 are locating in the same axis all right where 1 is known as driver and uh, 4 is known as driven the first and last gear are mounted on the same axis of rotation in the shaft is known as reverted gear train so you can analyze from the from the diagram it is very much clear uh, gear 1 and 2 are rotated in the opposite direction you can see gear 1 and 2 both are rotated in opposite direction similarly gear 2 and 3 are mounted in the same shaft see gear 2 and 3 you can see gear 2 and 3 both are mounted in the same shaft axis also will be same uh, rotational axis remains same uh, now the gear 3 drive to gear 4 and in the same direction as that of gear 1 that can be observed in the diagram uh, now uh, the motion of gear 1 first and the gear 4 last one are the same uh, that is not that is one of the typical example of reverted gear train uh, it uses the main application what is uh, where it can be implemented uh, it used where power to transmit it within the less space you can transmit the power with very less space that's the main application of reverted gear train okay uh, you have to uh, learn the terminology what is coaxial co co what do you mean by coaxial coaxial is nothing but same axis object which is rotating in the same axis see uh, 1 and 4 is one of the example of reverted gear, gear train uh, 1 is known as driver 4 is known as driven or follower both are locating in the same axis that's a peculiarity of reverted gear train let us list out some applications of reverted gear train. First application, it can be used in gearbox of automobile system. Uh, then back gear, especially in the lathe machine. Then speed reducer in the industrial application. And finally, uh, clock mechanism uh, to connect hour handle to minute handle. Uh, that's the main application of uh, reverted gear train. Here you can see uh, the power transmission area that is very limited. Okay, you can imagine a clock or any type of watches you can see uh, the power transmitted area is limited at that time you can transmit the power with the help of a gear train one of the best example of reverted gear train mechanism moving on to the fourth one that is epicyclic gear train what do you mean by epicyclic gear train before moving on to epicyclic gear train i would like to bring you one observation regarding sun and earth as you know that earth is rotating over the sun around the sun Earth will be rotating around the sun. Uh, that is a uh, natural principle. Uh, same manner, uh, there are two uh, gears you can observe. Gear number B and gear A. So, the peculiarity of gear B is, uh, it is revolving around the gear A. It will be revolving around gear A with the help of this arm, arm C. You can observe arm C. Arm C will be considered as a reference or reference axis. So, based on the arm C, uh, the gear B will be rotating around gear A. This is gear A and this will be gear B. So what gear B does? Gear B will be rotating around gear A based on arm C. So this principle you can compare with uh, earth is revolving around sun with the help of one but its own axis. One of the example. Uh, you can compare the same system with uh, uh, epicyclic gear train system. That means the epicyclic gear trains are shown in the figure. Both the figures are identical. Uh, and they have drawn in different manners. That's it. Uh, where the gear B rolls around outside of stationary gear A with a reference to arm C. That's a speciality. Here also you can see this is actually arm C and this is gear B. And you can see gear A. Gear B will be revolving around gear A. This is a peculiarity of epicyclic gear train. Uh, you can see. Uh, the epicyclic gear train is used to transmit high velocity ratio. It is also called as planetary gear or sun and planet gear trains. That's a speciality. That is why I told you, you can compare entire system with the uh, sun and earth movement. Gear B goes around gear A. Just for planet gear, move around the sun gear. Planet gear, move around the sun gear. That's a speciality. This motion of planets around the sun gear is known as planetary motion. It is resembles to planetary motion. Therefore, uh, the gear B motion around gear A is known as planetary motion. It is resembles to planetary motion. Okay, this type of gear mechanism is known as epicyclic gear train. There are a lot of applications, especially automobile in different gear system, then lathe back gear, then pulley blocks, then hoist and wrist wash. These are the various applications of epicyclic gear train. I, I, I would like to show you one typical gear train mechanism. Uh, you can see these are the different gears. This is gear 1 and uh, this is gear 2. Uh, the gear 1 is known as primary gear. You can see gear 1 is known as primary gear. And where gear 2 is known as secondary gear. 
uh, gear 1 has been directly connected to motor with the help of motor shaft where uh, gear 2 will be connected to load through load shaft our aim is to transmit the power from one point of the shaft to other point of the shaft there are two segments available here now theta 1 represents the angular displacement of motor and tm represents motor torque similarly theta 2 represents angular displacement of uh, load where tl is known as the torque developed by the load so these are the speciality regarding this typical gear train mechanism n1 represents number of teeth in the gear 1 you can see n1 number of teeth in the gear 1 R1 represents radius of the gear 1, uh, theta 1 represents angular displacement of the motor shaft where J1 represents moment of inertia of the motor and the gear. This is actually J1. J1 represents moment of inertia of motor and the gear 1. B1 represents viscous friction coefficient of motor and gear 1. T1, rep T1 represents, uh, this is TL not T1, TL represents load torque on the gear 1. Okay. Similarly, TM represents torque developed by the motor. Uh, similarly, N2 represents number of teeth in the gear 2, N2, N2 will be representing number of teeth in the gear 2 and R2 represents radius of the gear 2 and uh, theta 2 represents angular displacement of the load shaft, J2 represents uh, moment of inertia of the load and gear 2, B2 represents viscous friction coefficient of the load and gear 2, B2. Then T2 represents torque transmitted to gear 2 from gear 1 and TL represents load torque. These are the different terminology you must have known about gear train mechanism. You can derive some equations related to uh, the gear train mechanism. Let us look at this portion. Motor with uh, gear system. You can write J1 into D square theta 1 by DT square plus B1 into D theta 1 by DT plus T1 equal to TM. So this can be written in this manner. You can up, this actually derived from Newton's second law of motion. And similarly, uh, look at the second side. Gear 2 has been connected to load. Here you can write J2 into D square theta 2 by DT square plus B2 into D theta 2 by DT plus TL equal to T2. You can call this one as equation number 1, equation number 2. One more relation I can derive from the diagram. Uh, linear distance travelled by the gear is given by theta 1 into R1. This is regarding the motor side and theta 2 into R2 that is regarding uh, load side. Okay. So, we, from this we can write theta 2 by theta 1 equal to R1 by R2. So, angular displacement is inversely proportional to radius. You can derive the equation. This you can call equation number 3. Uh, same thing I have written over here. Theta 1 into R1 equal to theta 2 into R2 or else you can write theta 2 by theta 1 equal to R1 by R2. In the same manner, I can derive one more expression that is in between number of teeth and radius. So, number of teeth N1 that is directly proportional to R1. Similarly, number of teeth at the second gear N2 is proportional to R2. Therefore, N1 by N2 can be written as R1 by R2. Now, see two equations. N1 by N2 is equal to R1 by R2. Similarly, theta1 by theta1 equal to R1 by R2. So, such case, what we can write? theta 2 by theta 1 equal to n1 by n2. How do you get this equation? You compare these two equations. Theta 2 by theta 1 equal to r1 by r2. Then n1 by n2 is equal to r1 by r2. Obviously, from this equation, I can easily derive that theta 2 by theta 1 equal to n1 by n2. So, please keep this one as fourth equation. Now, you can calculate the work done by the gear. What is work done? Torque into displacement. Tor torque into angular displacement. So, T1 into theta1 that can be equated to theta2 into T2. From this, I can write T1 by theta, T1 by T2 is equal to theta2 by T1. Or else, you can write T1 into D theta1 by DT is equal to T2 into D theta2 by DT. These three equations, these uh, five equations, essential five equations are necessary for deriving the transfer function of gear 1 and gear 2. Okay. Uh, that transfer function I will be working out with the help of chalk and talk presentation that will be more effective that I will be doing immediately after completion of this session. So please stay tuned. I will be, update, uh, be updating the transfer function of the gear train system soon. These are the references which helped me to complete the presentation. I would like to convey my thanks to Mr. Pratik Vishatar, one of my students who is studying in third year engineering. If you are having any doubts regarding this presentation, you can put up a suitable comment in the comment box. Definitely I will reply back to you. 
Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please share and don't forget to subscribe. For non-technical subject, kindly watch my another channel, Winners Capsule. You will be getting more information. I need your continuous support for the upcoming days. Thanks a lot.